This video is going to be a short follow-up to the one I made last month about the truth behind Ozempic weight loss. I'm a pharmacist and you guys asked me about more information on the risks and side effects of the Ozempic use. Yeah, let's start, shall we? And if you guys haven't seen my first video, here it is, you can watch it. And I obviously don't want to repeat everything I was talking about there because this video would be too long and we do not want this, right? But let me shortly remind you about the drama. So now there are many people who lose weight on Ozempic and yes, there are a lot of them. I know because of the shortage, there no people can get Ozempic in my country now because there is an increased demand. This means that people who really need this medication, who have diabetes and have been using this medication for ages, they cannot get it now because some other people decided that it's fun to lose weight on Ozempic. It is easy. And this makes me sad, guys. We also see a lot of celebrities who've lost weight recently, and some of them admit they've been using Ozempic or Wegovy, and some of them don't. We don't know for sure, guys, of course, but I mean their weight loss is drastic. But what we're dealing with, so Ozempic or Wegovy, these are just brand names, and the actual medication, the actual active ingredient is semaglutide. Semaglutide is a GLP-1 receptor agonist, and GLP is glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist, and agonist means that it helps the GLP-1 secretion. And GLP-1 can cause insulin secretion, inhibition of glucagon release, but also which helps with the weight loss, the delayed gastric emptying, and reduced appetite. And semaglutide is also beneficial for people with heart disease. So yeah, basically semaglutide is the medication which was approved for the type 2 diabetes treatment, but now it also got approved uh, for the obesity treatment under the brand name Wegovy. So Ozempic is not actually approved for their weight loss medication as a weight loss medication, but Wegovy is. Uh, Wegovy is actually the one that Elon Musk has used and he admitted this. And according to the NICE guidelines for treatment of type 2 diabetes, semaglutide is only advised for those patients who have BMI body mass index above 35, which means that they have obesity. And also the other thing is that they haven't responded well to the first line medications like menthamine or others. And yeah, we have two conditions, so it's not a first choice, guys. So given what I said before, we can understand that Ozempic or semaglutide or Wegovy, whichever, can influence and will influence the hormones, precisely pancreas hormones, insulin and glucagon. And if we stimulate some organ to work better, to work, like <laughs> increase their effect efficacy, if we are stimulating some organ for some time, and remember that with type 2 diabetes, you have the pancreas malfunction and you don't produce enough insulin and we are stimulating pancreas to produce more insulin. And if you don't have type 2 diabetes, if you just want to lose weight, you still got these effects because it's semaglutide, it's, it works so. And if you are stimulating some organ pancreas, if you're stimulating it and then you actually stop using Ozempic, we actually don't know if your pancreas starts working right after the Ozempic withdrawal like it was working before it. So we don't know it if it will need stimulation or it wouldn't. If you develop the type 2 diabetes or you won't. We don't know this. We actually don't know nothing about the long-term effects about the treatment of obesity. It's of course a speculation, we don't really know it, we don't really know nothing about it. So this is just what I can think of long-term risks for uh, Ozempic use uh, on the weight loss as a pharmacist. And we should also take into consideration that obesity has its own risks to the health. And if it's riskier to take Ozempic but to lose the weight, or it's riskier to not use Ozempic and to live with obesity, so yeah, we don't, we cannot calculate it now, but we need more studies for sure. What we know for sure now is the side effects in the Ozempic patient infilus, and the most common ones are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, stomach pain. And these were the most common ones. Of course, there are more serious side effects, but what you should guys remember is that every medication 
every medication has side effects and some of them are mild, some of them are really serious and you can get hospitalized but it's like the most serious ones are one out of like 100,000 people but the common ones is one out of 10 can have them. So I actually found some articles, some news for this week, for the Ozempic, the latest news. And let's talk about this first one. This is this happened literally this week. And a woman is suing Ozempic and Manjaro manufacturers for developing severe gastrointestinal issues. And that is what I was talking about before. You can have serious side effects or you can have the mild ones or you can have none of this. Every person is different and you you cannot tell it before you start using the medication, but you can take precautions. Like if you want to avoid nausea, if you want to avoid like stomach pains, you can get this medication with or without food. You can you really need to test it and you need to listen to your doctor because every medication is different and you better write it down. The most important information. Also, you can I always advise my patients to read carefully the patient info list you have with your medication. If you don't have it, you can find it online, but always read it because it has a lot of information you may have forgotten. So this woman was taking both Ozempic, Semaglutide and Malujara, which is the new one, Terzipatide. We don't have it, this medication in my country, but I looked into it and it both act like GLP-1 receptor agonized and also GIP and also GIP, glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide receptor agonist. So it has two mechanisms of actions. And I don't really understand why she needs two GLP-1 receptor agonists. It's like, it's a bit strange. And it of course can increase the risk of side effects, but uh, I'm not her doctor and I won't uh, really get into it today, but just, yeah, we are just talking side effects, guys. And the second news article we're going to talk about is from CBS News and we, it talks about Ozempic side effects could lead to hospitalization and the doctors warned that long-term impacts remain unknown. Exactly what I was talking about before in this video, long-term effects are really remaining unknown and yeah, we need a lot more studies because there are really a lot of people using this medication now and yeah, this is also a reason why we see a lot of news on Ozempic and Nalchara and Wegovy because really a lot of people are using this and uh, yeah, a lot of people get side effects, a lot of people go to court, uh, do lawsuits and yeah, and as it's hyped, we get a lot of news, uh, yeah. This is why we know about everything. It's just every medication is the same, guys, actually. Every medication has a lot of side effects, serious side effects and lawsuits. It's just not every medication is as hyped as semaglutide. And, uh, and the third one, actually the last one, I found the article speculating on what will happen if you stop using Azambic. So let's see. So the first one, the first thing, your appetite will return. Well, obviously it will return if you stop using Ozempic, it will stop suppress your appetite and your appetite will return. It's logical, I hope <laughs> it was the easy one. And so the second one is you will regain weight. Yeah, <laughs> you will regain weight because your your appetite will return, you will start eating again and you will regain your weight. Another easy one. And the third one, a Zambic face, will go away with this one. I'm actually not sure, guys, because I saw that Gary Lenkov uh, was talking. Uh, I will leave the link to his Instagram, his cosmetic surgeon, plastic surgeon, sorry. Uh, and he was talking about that, for example, with buccal fat removal, if we remove the fat from the face, uh, this fat will not restore. And if you want to fill this gap, which will, uh, with aging, <laughs> be more prominent, prominent, you will need a filler. And I think with Ozempic weight loss and fat loss, it will be the same. Of course, probably if you go from normal weight to obesity back, it will restore in some way. But I think the Ozempic face is permanent, guys. So the fourth one, it's just what I think. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> And the fourth, fourth is side effects will subside. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
<laughs> if you're not using the medication which causes side effects, you will not have side effects. And the fifth one is blood sugar climbs. And yeah, that is what I am afraid of because this medication is specifically made to manage type 2 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, you have the pancreas malfunction, it doesn't produce enough insulin, or your cells have an adequate response to the insulin, and you will need to stimulate pancreas to produce more insulin. And if you are constantly like stimulating your pancreas, it can it can it can become <laughs> it can become lazy, so called lazy, there is no thing like lazy organ. Uh, it can become like lazy and Probably it won't stop working on the same level as it was before you start taking Ozempic. It's of course a speculation, but yeah, I think it could take some time for it to return to the normal functioning. So your blood sugar can go up and it's dangerous. It's not as dangerous as uh, if your blood sugar goes down <laughs> because it can lead to coma, but if your blood sugar is high for years, for months, for a long period of time, it can bring a lot of risks to the health. So yeah, don't get me wrong guys, this video was not supposed to make you afraid of the Ozempic, of the Wegovy, of the Monjaro, anything, any medication. I'm not here to <laughs> frighten you about medication, that they have side effects and that don't use medication. If you need the medication, you just need it, you just need to calm down to listen to your doctor, listen to your pharmacist, listen to everything they explain to you, probably write down the most important points then to read the patient info list. And yeah, if you need the medication to treat certain condition, remember that this medication has decades of research, really guys, decades of research and yeah, EMA, European Medicine Agency and FDA, Food and Drug Administrations are here to really look into safety after the, <laughs> uh, yeah, really here to look into safety issues and you don't need to be afraid. It, what I'm talking about is that we are playing with medication, with serious medication, we are playing with it just for fun, just for weight loss, because we need to lose some kilograms. Remember that it's always about benefits and risks ratio, ratio. and if you need this medication to treat type 2 diabetes, by all means, listen to your doctor and go for it. Be careful, be thoughtful, read about this, but go for it. If you need it, you need it. But if you need to lose 5 kilograms, I don't understand it guys. If you just need to lose 5 kilograms, I don't understand this. I honestly don't understand this. If you are morbidly obese and you are willing to take the risks because your health and your life are so impacted by this weight, I do understand you. And at the end of the day, it's still you who decides whether to take risks or not because there will be always, there will always be doctors who will prescribe to you no matter what medication you ask, there will be doctors to prescribe it to you and it makes me sad but if after watching this video at least one person will decide to educate him or herself, I will be beyond happy and thank you guys for watching this video, I hope it was helpful and see you in my next one, bye!